Hello everybody, if you've come here from part one of this video, the drive shaft removal or the CV boot installation tech tip, welcome back. We're about to get the drive shaft with new boot reinstalled into the truck. If you've come straight here and you want to see either of those videos, there should be some links popping up above my head right now, which you can click to take you to them before you watch this one. Cool, let's get on with the final part of this process and get this drive shaft back in the truck. Right, welcome to part two of this video, and it's actually day two, because a couple of things held me up yesterday. I did want to get all three videos done in one day. Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, remember that dust shield that broke off? Well, that left a really jagged edge around the knuckle, which I just thought was a future trip to A&E waiting to happen. So I cleaned off the knuckle and ground off that edge. So hopefully, will not cause me any injuries in the future. Uh, the other thing, the drop link bushes. I saw those yesterday and thought, man, these need to be replaced. But I don't know when you're watching this, but right now it's the end of March 2020 and we're right in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic. Everyone's on lockdown, so finding stuff now is difficult. Um, I did try to locate some parts, but I didn't have any luck doing it. So it's gonna have to stay as it is for now. Uh, so those two things combined just set me back a little bit yesterday but we're back on track now day two let's get this job done all right so if you have come here from the drive shaft removal video this video for the most part is going to be that process in reverse so i'll try and whip through it as quickly as possible there are a few things to note though first and foremost torque specifications all right every nut and bolt in your steering and suspension has a torque spec which you need to adhere to and these do differ from vehicle to vehicle so you'll need to look that up in your workshop manual and you will need a torque wrench to accurately set this and most of these bolts or nuts are torqued with the weight of the car on its wheels so bear that in mind as well the other thing worth mentioning split pins if you've removed any of these i'd always recommend throwing some new ones in so even though i got a couple of mine out okay i'm gonna throw a new set in anyway all right i've got my drive shaft here ready to be installed into the diff so i'm gonna remove this paper towel first great so to install this push it back into the diff make sure it engages with the splines like that now at this point it just needs a knock to seat it so i'm going to take my hammer and gently tap it from this end like that give it a good push there we go she's in there just give it a pull to make sure it's seated that feels good all right okay next up is the steering knuckle so to install this to install this slide the splines on the drive shaft through the wheel bearing while simultaneously locating this lower ball joint Now get the castle nut on. Tighten that up as tight as you can with your fingers. Right, I've just put a couple of tie wraps around there for now to stop this knuckle falling forward. Now the next thing I need to do is engage this upper ball joint, but that's gonna be difficult right now. So what I'm gonna do is jack up this lower wishbone to get this knuckle here closer to this ball joint. Oh, I'll put the axle nut on now as well. Just finger tight on that for now is fine. Okay, that's a lot closer now, as you can see. So I'm just gonna apply a bit of downward force on this upper wishbone to locate it and then get the nut on by hand. Push down hard. 
Now ball joints can be a bit of a pain to tighten up because you might find the joint itself will want to rotate. So to stop it doing that, do whatever you can to force the tapered parts together and that should provide enough friction for you to be able to do up the nut without the whole joint turning with it. Okay, tie rod up next, same process. Let's get that out of the way first. Locate it in its tapered housing, like that. Bit of downward pressure and put the nut on. Right, I'll talk the lower ball joint up first. Uh, I looked in the workshop manual, the torque for this is 118 to 156 Newton meters. So I'm gonna set my torque wrench to the lower end of that scale, about 120. Okay, that's nipped up to 120 newton meters. Now you'll probably find the castle nut isn't quite aligned with the holes, which mine isn't. So as I set it to the lower end of the torque spec, I'm gonna tighten the nut up to the next hole and then install a new split pin. New split pin. I know it looks rusty, it is new. Install that. Okay, so apart from the torque specs, which are upper ball joint, 30 to 50 Newton meters, and the tie rod, 45 to 58 Newton meters, the process is exactly the same, so I'm sure you don't need to see that. I'll crack on with it, and then I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, so that's all three nuts installed with new split pins. Now, a little tip for you guys before we go any further. You see this thing here, this is your lock stop. So this is what limits the lock. So when you turn the steering wheel and it stops, that's this part here hitting this part here. So I'm gonna get some copper grease and I'm gonna put a big splodge of it right there. And what that's gonna do is when you're on maximum lock and the suspension travels up and down, you'll hear a creaking noise if you haven't put some grease on there. So there you go, you're welcome. Okay, now we're onto the brakes and the first thing to go on will be the brake disc. This just slots over the studs. But before you do that, make sure there's no dirt or debris on the mating surfaces. So the inside of the brake disc and the face of the hub here, because if there is and you trap it in there, the disc won't run true. And when it's all tightened down, you'll get a vibration on the brakes. So make sure it's clean. Mine looks pretty good, so disc can go on. I'm gonna use a couple of nuts to hold this disc in place. Uh, if you've got a retaining screw, you can put that back in right now. Great, that'll hold all that true while I put the caliper back on. All right, bolts ready with some copper grease on. I'm gonna get this caliper down. It's quite a heavy old beast this, heavier than I expected it to be anyway. Okay. Right, position this back over the disc. And get the bolts in. Ok, 
Okay, torque wrench at the ready, set to 120 newton meters. Tight. That's one. Two. Okay, they're topped up. That's the brake side of things taken care of, uh, apart from the ABS sensor, so that's up next. So I'll just wind this cable back where it was before. I think it was somewhere there. Notice there's a little o-ring on it as well to stop any water getting in there. Make sure you don't forget to put that back on. Okay, now I can locate it back into its housing. Nip that up. Now there's just the two brackets left to install, so... Oh, typical. <laughs> I've gone the wrong way around the brake line. Start again. Right, where were we? Bracket. One. Right, we are nearly there. Uh, last thing that I need to do on the brake side of things is reinstall the flexi line into this little bracket here and install the clip. Okay, we are nearly done here. Brakes are installed, uh, all the nuts are torqued down and new split pins installed where necessary. Uh, the only nut left to torque up is this axle nut here, uh, but I'll do that when the car is on its wheels. So that's what I'm going to do now. Get all the tools out of the way, wheel back on, jack it up, drop it down, torque that nut up. Right, it's time to torque this up. Uh, I had intended to torque it up, but my socket is three quarters and my torque wrench is half inch and I don't have an adapter. So it's not gonna get torqued properly. But as it wants about 220 Newton meters, it wants to be pretty damn tight. So I'm just gonna get the breaker bar on it, nip it up tight, and then punch that collar into the recess in the drive shaft. And then, pretty much job done. All right, that is a wrap on this video and I can tell you right now it's been a bit of a marathon to film and both edit because I've just almost finished the last video and realized that I never filmed an outro. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, but the good news is it's been about two months since I replaced the CV boot on this truck and it's been about two months since I did the steering box adjustment video and the EGR blanking video, part two that is, and the truck has been driving perfectly since then now i know a lot of you are asking james where is the capri and why are we not seeing much of that well the truth is between this covid19 lockdown and the fact that i'm in the middle of moving house getting time to spend on the capri is proving a little difficult right now but i am in the middle of writing a script for another video that involves the capri so don't panic capri footage is on its way Okay, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, even though it didn't feature the Capri. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing here. Thanks a lot, guys. I will see you for the next video.